Welcome to AWS What's New. I'm Jeff Barr. Today, my special guest is David Zbitsky, Chief Evangelist for Alexa and Echo. How's it going? How are you, man? It's Doing been great. a while. Yeah. So, first, warning for all your viewers if you have an Echo around or an Alexa enabled device, make sure you mute it because we're going to be saying Alexa a lot. And uh, gosh, man, the last time we talked was September. 2015. I looked it up on the AWS podcast, and I don't. I can't remember if you had an Echo yet. Or I totally did. You sure. totally did. Okay, so I want to ask you, how many Echoes do you have now? Well, it's. I think the mathematical term is uncountably <laughs> finite. I think I have. I have at least six in different parts of the house. Okay. And they they start out in the the high traffic areas, and then as newer ones come, they kind of progress to the kind yeah, of the periphery yeah. of the house. I remember. I remember when I was, uh, we were having dinner and I was talking about the show and you didn't have one yet and I was kind of selling one uh, to your wife and she was like, Jeff, why don't we have one yet? When We've it got does three now. Yeah, okay, <laughs> awesome. So I did my job, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been, it's been crazy um, to see the kind of the evolution on it. There's something called the blueprint. I'm really excited about this. So we would hear from customers I want to teach Alexa to remember things. I want to, I just want to do like trivia or maybe like burn dad with some jokes about dad, right? So you can go to blueprints.amazon.com and anybody can create a skill. So anybody meeting not a developer. Correct. Like you can create stories and there's a whole sound library. So you're doing it visually and then it creates a story. You can be like, uh, you know, it's the story of slaying the dragon and, you know, little Johnny is a, um, the hero of the story, right? And so you can do things like that. But you can also do how to take care of my pets. So maybe you're away and somebody's dog sitting. It's this is when you feed them, right? Or uh, babysitter information about, you know, don't believe, this would be my girls, don't believe my girls' bedtime is 11 o'clock at night, right? <laughs> like you can leave those, t those types of information. Um, and then we heard from people well, I want to create some of this stuff and then share it with my parents. You know, maybe they have an echo too. My parents are older. Uh, my dad, believe it or not, you know, two, two kids in tech, he does not use a computer. He's never used a computer. But he talks about Alexa when we get together, the things that he's done. Um, and, you know, music he's looked up, all of that. So I can create skills and then he can, he can use them. And um, one of the other interesting things we just launched which I think will be very uh, interesting for your viewers, is we have Alexa for business. You know, so we would, we would hear people saying, I'm bringing Echoes into work, but you know, you know what it's like. You need to manage these devices. You need to make sure that not everybody is running whatever skill they want. You know, you're going to have skills that are just for your enterprise. So now blueprints, you can actually make business-related skills. Okay. So you could do, like, what are the IT hours? You know, what's the and guess? once again, not as a developer, just as a regular just user who can regular, use a web browser. Right, the people that don't <laughs> think in code. Um, so you can go in there and you could do meetings, you can do just uh, information about maybe it's a, who's my HR contact, what are the, uh, uh, the IT help desk hour, hours and what's the number, right? Because then you're not trying to find that, it's just available and right there. We've also added the ability for meetings. So to create skills around meetings. Like think about this. And, and you know this this happens at Amazon too. How many hours are wasted trying to add somebody to a meeting? How many are uh, trying to get the projector to work, right? And you know the Alexa team. We were sitting around and we were like, why can't Alexa do this? And mm -hmm. now you can. So you could say, Alexa, start the meeting, and it'll bring people in. It's integrated with Chime or uh, Office 365. There mm -hmm. are. Um, Devices like Polycom has a device with integrated with Alexa in it. Now, I do like it. to be able to ask every morning what's on my calendar, and then that yes. what I hear back actually tells me is it a go to the office day or is it a work from home day? Yeah, and this yeah we're very similar in, in that in the in the morning of trying to figure out where you need to be right. Um, and this is what's super interesting with Alexa for Business. You can enroll users, so it's got integration. Um, with directory and everything like that. And then what you can do is you can enroll their devices at home. So in the morning, what you could do is you could get your flash briefing from Alexa, but then she could pull your calendar, but then she could also use skills that are just for your group, right? So they wouldn't be available anywhere else. So it's like, I like to think of it as a voice VPN. 
right? So you're pulling in your work with home in the moment when you need it. Basically. Now, an important aspect of this I don't think you mentioned is it's keyed off of my voice as well. I have to establish that voice identity with Alexa to make sure that yeah, I'm that's another, getting my calendar. Yeah, so here's something that's changed over time. You may remember, because you've had Alexa for a while too. Um, you used to have to say something like, Alexa, learn my voice. Over time, you had to say, learn my voice. And then you had to go through voice training. That was something that you could pull up. I do remember that. Yeah. So now, just by talking to with, with her, she's going to build a model around that. And so she knows when I go to order something off Amazon, it's me. I don't have to give my PIN code and stuff like that. Or if I say, Alexa, play top hits, it's dad's music. And it's not my kid's music. And that's something that's called voice matching. That's something that we've launched over time as well. Try to make it you know, seamless for people to not have to remember to, to go ahead. I find that when I'm traveling, if I'm in a hotel room, that before you even think about it, you issue an Alexa command and then you get somewhat disappointed that nothing actually happens. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting how our brains work, right? There's, um, there are neural pathways now that I have after four years of mm -hmm. talking with tech. And uh, I was just quoted uh, on this where I said, voice is the new HTML. And what I meant is that HTML, you, could, you can remember this time too, when the web came around, it wasn't about HTML. HTML became the vehicle to get content to anybody, right, through a browser. And so voice is that vehicle for content. You know, I can, it's all the tech in my life. So it's like, there's a switch in my brain that says, ask for stuff first. And I carry around uh, a little spot when I go into the hotel room so that I don't sound strange, you know, asking for Alexa. But those neural pathways are there now. Oh, I think it's deeper than that. So there's two different playlists. And literally when I say Alexa play instrumental jazz, that not only gives me the music I need to focus, but that also says stop messing around and actually like do some real work. Yeah. Um, it's because we process audio very different than we do visual. This is why you can listen to music while you're, while you're going ahead and, and writing, right, for example. So voice becomes very powerful. We, we launched a new thing called the Alexa for Hospitality. So there are hotels, I've actually stayed at a couple, that you have Alexa devices now. So you can go ahead and you can ask, uh, you know, what's my bill? Or order room service, or uh, turn on the lights, uh, the blinds, the things like that, mm -hmm. right? So it just becomes a very natural, seamless way for, for people to do things. Awesome. So, uh -huh. Are brands able to use this to create a customized experience for their guests? Yeah, the whole idea is two things. It's curated content. And I've actually seen brands that'll they'll get a device and they'll like wrap the hotel logo around the device too. So you do see some of that. Um, so you can lock it down, what's actually available. Only this music's available, for example, right? And only these skills are available. But it, when you get into hospitality, a lot of the concerns is around power consumption, right? Like if you think about it, this is why your AC will go off automatically when you're traveling or the lights will dim is when you have that much power going across those many different facilities across many different people, it becomes you want to conserve as much as you can, right? And so there's some of those things in hospitality. Are the devices running? Do they need to be running right now? Is there a guest in the room? If there's a new guest, how do you wipe that device and make sure that it's a completely new experience and that it's customized to those persons? So it gives a lot of those type of things that you may not necessarily see in an enterprise, right? Where you, you have to worry about power consumption, you're turning off the devices and things like that. Okay. Now, I know another area that, that you're personally interested in is the whole Alexa and vehicles. Tell me a bit about that. When I'm traveling, maybe I'm three, four hours, maybe I'm driving down to DC and it's like a little under three hours, right? I'll listen to podcasts in long form audio, but then I get to this point where I want something a little more interactive. I've started to play a lot of Alexa games. And then my whole family will actually play too. So there's really an engagement there. You think of in the past with auto, what have we been shown for like 10, 15 years, right? It's, hey, let's go find out where the pizza joint is. Like you don't know where you're gonna eat before you're in the car, right? So you can still do that kind of stuff and you can get GPS and everything. But now you can interact with all those. You can engage, so that probably sound. helps you stay alert as well when you're driving, I assume. Yeah, 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 because it gets you out of that brain, right? And you blow, I, I have a, a sunroof, so I try and get fresh air on me and everything too. And uh, so I brought, I actually brought a device here too, because I know you like seeing some of these, these new things. And what's super interesting about this device the team really worked, so this is 
Um, this is Echo Auto, so you can get Alexa built in. Like you can get, you, you buy a new car and it's built into the dash. So that's something that we absolutely do. But this is another device you can order on Amazon. Been blown away, there's been over a million pre-orders, believe it or not, on Amazon for this device. And it'll plug right into your car and what it does is it uses the Bluetooth and the internet connection from the phone. Like here, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll just it. play around for a little second. So if I unmute her, this is gonna go out through my phone speakers. So if this was connected in my car, we would hear it through the Bluetooth, same kind of thing. Uh, Alexa, tell me a joke. Why are zebras bad at baseball? Three stripes and they're out. All right, so still dad jokes abound, yeah. right? <laughs> the same kind of thing. But what the team worked on, if you think about the car, it's even harder from a, a, a microphone perspective than it is in the home. Because you, you, you think a no, noisy uh, home, right? Like my home can be very, very noisy. But the car, think about it, you're driving, there's the sound of the wind, maybe it's raining, so there's windshield wipers going, and then music. I like to play my music really loud. So there's a lot, uh, this is using the same kind of beam um, technology with the microphones, and you can see some of that here. So if we ask- these little holes? Yeah, yeah, top? so if we asked like, uh, and obviously it's not gonna be as loud on my phone, but let's ask, let's ask Alexa, sing me a song. Please. Should I do my dad dance? <laughs> Alexa, pause. So you can see, and you can imagine the speaker is very loud like sure. that in the car. And even, you know, my kid's shouting from the back, right? So she can she can detect and all that. And that's a, you know, very affordable device. So really exciting. I think uh, car is going to be a big place for voice, uh, just like the home, right? With smart home, with what we've seen. Cool. So let me ask you the question that I always get that's always impossible to answer really well. <laughs> Thanks. Where is all this going in five to ten years? Yeah, I think I think you know. My perspective is that it's about human beings again, right? You think about the past thirty years; it was about finding a way for us to interact with technology. You know, we've created these great drop-down lists and tabbed interfaces and all of that, but it was because we didn't have the technology to understand from a human being level, the intention of what was being said. So I think as time goes on more and more, one, nothing beats speed, right? It's why I'll ask Alexa for something versus pulling out my phone. Speed is a feature. Right? And so being able to talk, it's very inclusive. Um, we've left people out. You know, for me, sitting around, I just, computers and tech came to me naturally, and I would get excited about it, and I would go explain it to my parents, and they'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, right? And I talk to these brands, and I'm like, well, what's your customer base? Like, if you're gonna launch a new phone uh, mobile app, it's gonna leave some people out. In the history of tech, there has never been a wave that we've had like this, that you didn't need a new device, you didn't need to patch the OS and have the latest version of the OS, and you didn't need to update the app. You just needed to be able to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think where this is going is that it's inclusive for the first time. And so I think of things like, think of like YouTube and content and creators. There are people that may have never been good with a mouse and a keyboard, but suddenly that we're gonna get content created from them. And we're gonna be interacting with it. We're gonna have conversations. It, it sounds like the blueprints are also uh, an enabling feature That's the for first that. part of it, yeah, is that seeing what people can do there. Sounds awesome. Well, it's been really, really great to catch up. Really appreciate you coming by to have our chat. I'm still Jeff Barr. I've been speaking with David Zbiski. Really appreciate you coming by and look forward to having you again sometime in the future. Thank you, still Jeff Barr. My pleasure.